Hey. What's up, Friday night? <laughs> it's been a minute. What? What I do? <laughs> Got me here on the late night listening to Zaza. <laughs> Hey. What do I do? Same thing. Gang, gang. Gang, gang. Watch. <laughs> Watch. Bang, bang. What's up, Tasha? What's up, Cardi? Cardi? Are you famous? Let me see. You know my name. Hey. Yo. Just waiting on my partner in crime. See if we gonna do this thing tonight. It's been a long, long day a long life hey <laughs> what's up charles reese nice to see you what's up b what i do hey we trying to come back with the key key we missed last week because you know Life is hectic. <laughs> Woo. All right. We almost here with Charlotte. Moments with Cray. I hope you're having a dope Friday night. Hi. Hi, Charles. Very good to see you. Man, and I'm all the way in New York. We met all the way in L.A. <laughs> Look at life. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm just Best still waiting on. Maybe a couple of Charla. Charla, Charla. Because tonight, we're going to keep it nice and. Hey, what's up, Dorian? Dorian Clark. The legend. The one, the only. I'm <laughs> What's up? Oh, girl, this is, I'm going to say this is a celebration oh, because up? whenever I, I, I've never really just been able to bust up on the scene. Okay. She came on the scene. Normally it's like something else and something else and something else. So oh, thank good. goodness. Dang, I put a little even got the music popping. Girl, I even put up a little prayer. I was like, oh please, please, dear God, let this work tonight. Because <laughs> you I save your prayers for something. Got the time. <laughs> but girl, these prayers come and they come all the time. That's it's always if the main line is open I at all that. times. I heard that. So, What's up, DJ Cecilia? Oh, snap. Oh, DJ Sincere's in the building. It's been a long time. You know what? what it's what it's been a real week. To. How was your week? Well, Ross, well we're not going to bury the lead here. How was your week? Oh, goodness. My week was too... I mean, I, I'm barely able to sit here, okay? It's just too much to explain, but... It was a phenomenal week uh, doing dream camps, an unbelievable life-changing week, not just for myself, but for the artists that came out, for the kids. I mean, I just, I couldn't have, I couldn't have prayed for more. It was exactly what I imagined. It touched me exactly the way I wanted to. The kids received it the way I wanted to. And it was just, I cried all week. That's why I'm like, whatever I got left, Kiki, I'm giving y'all the last little bit I got left. I got nothing. I've given it all, all week. So She's um, leaving it on the field, guys. She's leaving it on the field. So what was, like, I mean, for the people who don't know what the dream camps are all about, give us a little bit of what, this new initiative and new, you know, injection of creativity into, you know, young people's lives. What it's all about? Well, so Dream Camps was really just a brainchild of mine. I wanted to create, I'm a big dreamer. So I wanted to create a safe place for artists to come and dream. 
And I wanted it to be twofold. I wanted artists like myself to be able to pour into kids. And I wanted kids to pour into us as well, too, with their energy. So mm -hmm. every day this week, um, it was an exposure camp. So we brought in artists who are singers, who are dancers, who are actors, and we exposed them to other parts of the industry. So it wasn't enough to just come into my camp and say, I'm a dancer, I mm -hmm. don't sing. So we had dancers who attempted to sing and singers who attempted to dance. And we brought in technical aspects and taught them how to do costume design. And we did music and songwriting. And so everybody just stretched in their dream beyond just um, one, you know, one facet of their dream. So it was a great week. We had a lot of love. We had great people from Hamilton stop by. We had people, Uzo Aduba stop by. We had Jason Durden from Greenleaf. Uh, what is it? Uh, uh, the pastor on Greenleaf, he stopped by this week. Today, we had a Grammy-nominated producer, Davi, stop by. Um, oh all these people came. Crystal Joy Brown from Hamilton, uh, who plays Eliza on Broadway. Wow. All these beautiful people came and invested into these kids who couldn't believe it. And it was really special because it's COVID and we are still socially mm -hmm. distanced. And I don't think that they had imagined what this could be. Every time I talked to them, they kept saying, we didn't think it was going to be like this. I was like, well, what did you think it was going to be? It superseded their expectations because what we're learning is we can create energy in these spaces, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. what we did was create a safe community. And so now those kids met. You know, you would think like, well, if you're not in person, you're not going to meet any new friends. Not true. All of those mm -mm. kids were talking to each other in the chat. They friends on Instagram now. They have set up their own dream camps. Uh, they said they got them a chat group. And so they are. Wow. It was beautiful. I mean, I just want to throw that out as my black parade because I invested in kids every day, all day. And I, I almost, I've been crying all week because I get emotional about, I get emotional watching them soak in everything, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and knowing that they're really getting it. And when I ask them, like, well, what are you walking away with this week? So many said, I learned how to manifest things. I learned mm -hmm. how to visualize. I learned, you know, how to believe in myself and how, you know, so it was powerful beyond just the art. You know, the art was just what we were working on. But the concepts can be used no matter what your dream is. So right. it was a successful week. I mean, we had 54 kids signed up. They came in there and they worked every day, their hearts out. And I'm so proud of them. I'm proud of the program. And so it's alive. It lives. So that was our first drink camp. We have already been approached about doing these camps all oh. year round. So it's Oh, my gosh. I mean, a concept of manifesting, to learn that at a young age, it just puts them so far, light years in understanding what it means to really, you know, have that law of attraction out there. So you yes. want something, you work for it, you put it out to the forefront, and you manifest it. And there's reaping season. So I just believe that that is so awesome for young people to have that seed. A yes. manifestation planted into them and to be gifted with such a surprise in the middle of the COVID. Yeah, Co I think that hashtag the things that COVID gave us. Hashtag the yeah. things that the COVID have blessed us with. And That's I think it. they felt very you know, selected and special because they were like, We didn't know we were gonna meet these celebrities and we they didn't, you know, that wasn't part of the pitch. You know, the pitch mm -hmm. is calm mm -hmm. for your art. But mm -hmm. when they got there, there was just gifts for them. And um, I just, one thing that I do want to say that I thought was so dope is we constantly talk about being a dream keeper. And that's a poem by Langston Hughes, which mm -hmm. basically says, protect your dream away from the hard, rough edges of the world. And so yes. I talked to them yesterday about hater blockers, like protecting yourself from the haters because I think as dreamers we have to start preparing ourselves like warriors you have to know that as you're dreaming if you have a gift that people are coming for you they are coming for your confidence they are coming for yep. your gifts so it's smart to prepare 
for that. Mm -hmm. You know, so when we're journaling, I'm like, so what are you going to do the next time somebody tells you you're not good enough? Let's yeah. not cry and let's not act, you know, surprised that somebody does that. Let me guarantee you that somebody is going to come to you and tell you you're not good enough. Somebody's going to tell you you think you cute. Somebody's not going to give you that light. What are you going to do to protect your spirit so that that doesn't stop you? And right. that makes us warriors. We are fighting warriors. to protect our dreams. And so I just want to put that into the universe for anybody listening to. I thought that was yeah. powerful when I, when I started making them think about how powerful they are and that it's work. We can't go into these dreams thinking everybody's happy for us or that right. everybody's going to understand it. You mm -hmm. gotta go into it knowing that that's part of the journey. Is yeah, the haters. No, yeah, I like that. The you know the you know hater blockers, and then you know it goes back to something that we always speak about is to be resilient. And it's like you know it's fine. You don't like me. Whatever you don't you don't feel you don't see my vision you don't see you don't accept what I'm doing and that's all right because I'm gonna keep moving ahead. I'm going to be resilient in the process and I'm going to, you know, carve it out the way that I see that it's in my mind to carve it out. And I'm just going to pursue the dream and the goal. So yeah. I think that's beautiful to once again, to plant that into children, because I think, uh, and to youth, because I, that's some of the, the, the things that we say, what I wish I would have known when I were yeah. an adolescent. If somebody would have told me, Hey, there's going to be a hater. Hey, don't be scared. Hey, pick yourself up. We would have spent less time trying to understand what's going on in the world and more time just trying to understand what we can provide. Yeah, it is going to change. Like we could just normalize it. Let's just normalize it and not act shocked. Let's not come home confused. Why don't nobody... I don't know. That's their job. I kept reminding yes. them that. It's no, that's hater's their job. job. Right? That's the hater's job. That's and their job. Haters out there, and we could call them haters, opposition. That's part of life. There are things that are set up to stretch you and make you stronger. So, um, But what I also wanted yes. to do was create an artist community of people who think differently. So I made them commit to each other. Here's another life on Instagram for you. Here's another person to tell you you're doing a good job. We support mm -hmm. each other as community. Artists. We don't have Our to community. just try to put each other down or, you know, ignore each other or, you know, what what does a like cost you? I always wonder that, you know, when you're putting out so much energy and good and you're like, so that's the easiest thing you can give artist to artist. I see you. I honor your journey. Respect. And go on with your day. It didn't cost you anything. But for haters, it cost them something here. And here. <laughs> you know, what you're talking about, it 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 it, it um it is supersedes just that particular realm of professional life. It's in everywhere, it's in every facet of yes. what we do. What does it take at the bottom line to be supportive? What does that take? It doesn't take a lot. It doesn't, you know, but people sometimes, and sometimes it's subconsciously that they just are like, I'm not going to show them any type of interest or any type of, you know, belief that I may have in them because I just don't want to. Right. Because I don't necessarily want to see them surpass me. Yeah. And that's the real thing. Regardless of what type of industry you're in, you have to, you know, guard yourself up with the with the, you know, tools that you're speaking of. Yes. Because there's haters everywhere. Thank you. But and that was my thing with Dream Camps is that this this will apply to any dream. This what when we talk about hater blockers, it's about protecting your dream. And it's so mm -hmm. funny today they got nervous. They had to write their own songs. They got nervous. And we had a moment where I said, No, we we protect our dreams. We are warriors about that because fear mm -hmm. wants to eat your dream. Like fear came here to eat your dream. And if you let it, 
it will disappear. So what we have to do is get stronger so we're fighting back against it. No fear. You don't get my dream. You don't get my vision. And so I'm hoping, and that's what becomes exciting to me, is creating this little army of artists who see it differently who don't see mm -hmm. each other as competition, you know, see each other as, you know, um, as a community, you know, because everybody's gifts were so different as well, too. Like, you might have been an epic singer and somebody else is an epic dancer. We can support, mm -hmm. you know, each other through that. So, um, so much good. Thank you for saying. I saw somebody ask where they could donate to the program. Um, AngelaWildflowers.com. Um, you can give a dream. Um, these camps are going to keep going. I actually, we just finished our inaugural camp this week. And I mean, by the time I closed the doors, I had opened up my email and they said, can you do these all year round for us? And I said, wow, God, like we really, and sometimes you don't know. And I kept telling my kids, and I know I, I probably feel in a way, but if I had counted on the likes that I got on, I put out all kind of, of their videos of what I was doing. If I had allowed that to be yeah. really informed the value of what I was doing, I mm. wouldn't have done it. I'd have been like, oh, nobody cares. Nobody yeah. supports me. Mm -hmm. Nobody believes in it. But that's not the truth. If, if mm -hmm. something's been planted in you, you have mm -hmm. to step out on it, right? And yeah. the universe provided what was needed. What's the yeah. like? Nothing. 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 No, yeah. So, it's like um, I, I had the opportunity to join in um for a, a, the the showcase hours that you had in today the show the show the out the show out hours so um that's when the kids all come in and they do their challenges or they perform for the day whatever the challenge was and they show out and they all showed up and they all showed out but i um the david he today told someone a, a kid, an adolescent, that they were a visionary. And when you plant those seeds early, as I stated, even with, you know, being resilient and, you know, manifestation, you have to understand that your vision is your vision. And you have to just pursue it, regardless of what area. And I just thought that was very powerful. And that's what you're speaking of right now. It's like, whatever you have, whatever God has planted in your spirit, in your soul, and what he's gifted you, the talents to Trust illustrate me. and to execute, do it. Do Trust it to the me. best of your ability. Trust and and let, 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 let whatever comes to fruition come to fruition. Yeah, and and so I think it's just it. a beautiful lesson. Yeah, beautiful let him lesson. Do. that's what this whole lesson was for me to let him do it. I thought it would have unfolded a thousand different ways. But the way it unfolded was the way when I surrendered and I'm like, okay, I feel like I'm supposed to be doing this. He brought the kids. He brought the, I met every goal. My goal was to also keep artists working. You yes. know? And so I thought other artists would support me in supporting artists because what I wanted to make sure I could do was to pay my teachers enough to pay their rent. We are living, we can't forget that COVID is here and a lot of us don't have income coming in, right? Mm -hmm. So I set a goal to make sure like, no, I'm not paying your light bill. I'm not asking you to come do all this work with kids for free. I'm not going to ask you to do it for $100, $200. I'm mm -hmm. going to make a difference in your situation. And that was a big undertaking. Where was I going to get the money to pay 10 people's rent? Right. But it happened. And that's why but I cried it happened. all week. That's why I cried all week. I pay rent for people. Not literally, but you know what I mean? I'm saying with, with, with what I was able to pay my teachers and what we were able to do, you know, it was a difference making. Because I do. Yeah, no. Yeah, you wanted to be a resource. So you were a resource. And I think that's something that what you've learned throughout of your, your you know, what your upbringing taught you was not only to bring myself up but if i have if i got five you got you got a, you got at least 250 you know what i'm saying i'm gonna spread that out however i can and so you not only were you know this was just um it was instrumental around in the back room in the front room in the kids in their hearts and their spirits and their soul in the people who um facilitated the classes because I know I saw, you know, their spirits 
full with, you know, excitement to see these young artists ready to conquer the next whatever. Yes. And there were some girls in, and there's some students in there in your class who are already going to, you know, performing arts colleges yeah. and, you know, earning accolades in this particular area of um, professional work. Opportunities. You know, one girl got, and I was surprised, She she's getting to record a song. She's, you know, the producers that came in want to work with her now. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. some of our special guests were like, who is that girl? You know, so there was opportunity there. And I know as a girl that grew up in the Midwest with these big dreams, sometimes it feels hard for you to figure out how do I get there? So not only we had kids from Ghana, we had kids from Syria, we had kids from Florida, Texas, but we also, New York, but we had kids from Kansas City, which is where I'm from. And so that meant a lot for me to be able to give back to kids where that are from where I'm from and give them an opportunity to be heard and seen and felt and, and validated. So yeah, I, thank you for yeah. asking because I'm sure I just finished. So all that's on my brain, um, but it was an amazing God centered. And it should stay on your brain until it, till whatever, because a lot of times we just don't celebrate the accomplishments we don't celebrate what we've done and we need to take the time to take the break and celebrate the accomplishment because it was a major one and you you overcame a lot you overcame the fact of what am i even supposed to do it's like you didn't know what you were going to do but you figured it out and Absolutely. you charted that path and you you did it and yeah, that's natural honey is saying too. Congratulations. That's a thing too, even as I was talking to them about a dream, I was living my dream. I had visualized something that I wanted to do. And so I was mm -hmm. watching it, you know, manifest itself. So it was a beautiful week. All the teachers called me and said, thank you. They all cried. They all were touched. And they didn't know they would be touched. They loved pouring into it. So it became something that was bigger than all of us. And God totally kept it in his hands and elevated it to exactly what he wanted it to be. So Dream Camps is here. It exists. Um, I'm sure we'll have another one really soon. And I have an arsenal of artists who have already signed up with me to teach future classes. So every Dream Camp will be different. And we will continue as artists to find a way to pay our bills. You know, the worst thought is for us to have to go out and get a job at some place that destroys your spirit, you know, because mm -hmm. bills have to be paid. And there have been times where I've had to do things I wasn't thrilled about doing, whether that was catering or whatever it was to keep the dream alive. Right. So I can offer this opportunity in COVID and beyond for mm -hmm. us to be able to just continue to art and pay their bills. And I'm talking about the poets, the songwriters, the people that we forget about in society mm -hmm. that don't have income always readily available you know i just think you know so many different things that you've done it just stems off into so many different areas of life in our economy you know you did you provided something that was worthwhile so that people could make money doing something that they love yeah. and now it's going to continue on so you'll be able to residually see the benefits of that and not just to say i'm just making money but you're making money and you're in, in empowering people economically and you're also giving kids the opportunity to live their dreams to dream and to know that a dream is not just a dream that stands alone a dream comes with work and so that's what you're allowing and you know a lot of the things that you know some of the resources and some of the deliverables that were executed and brought forth through your um through your camp it's just awesome kids creating resumes um kids doing you know uh the i, I what is that the, the pictures Oh, the, the headshots, the headshots, the headshots, they just preparing them. them, just preparing them, because sometimes we don't believe that you, we, it's a false sense of reality, like when you're sitting in high school, like, I'm going to get into theater, da, 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 da. but what was illustrated and what was executed this week was a taste of reality, when you get to wherever you're going, 
to, you know, perform or to try out, to show, audition, whatever. This was a taste of the real life. And not only did they get a taste, but they walked away with actual deliverables that they can use to seek employment and to seek other opportunities. And that was awesome. And I, I mean, and I want to say thank you. I just got a donate, and that's why I'm like, but that's God. I just got another donation for the program, and I thank you, Charles. Thank you for like, thank you. He just randomly came in here and heard us talking. Thank you, um, thank you, Charles. Thank you, thank you. The kids, mm -hmm. thank you. You can follow us at Dream Camps 2020. This is a labor of love. The kids are out here. We will be posting so many things that happened this week. And their response, and they're a hard group. I, I work with kids mm -hmm. from 5 to 18. Mm -hmm. And this time mm -hmm. we did 11 to 18. So that's mm -hmm. that middle school, high school, where you know they can come and give you an eye roll. But they were there, you know. And we impinged that that demographic. And I think that was powerful. So yes. guys were changed and will continue to be changed. And artists mm -hmm. were 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 helped so mm -hmm. that's my gist of the week thank you um for letting me speak on it thank you for everybody that did support it and that is continuing to watch and figure it out um to see what we're doing so i'm gonna keep putting it out there so that it'll just be making more and more sense week after week of what this movement is about and how many people we are setting out to help so what was your week <laughs> girl i feel like this this what we just talked about is such it you know it, it touched on so many different aspects of just generally living life that i don't even know what else we could speak about on tonight because it was just it just encompassed so much it encompassed understanding your dreams working towards them manifesting them you know laws of attraction you know getting the resources and a community around you to to boost you up and don't let the haters you know take you down resilience it was so many lessons to be learned from this conversation that we just had that i feel like anything else would just pale in comparison you're so crazy but, but because well because we all live this no no matter what career or field you're in, you know, even as adults, we are coming into accepting how powerful we are with mm -hmm. our thoughts and, yes. you know, our manifestations. And I just think, you know, when you watch every adult that sat in was like, whoa, if I had known that at 12 or 13, who would I be today? You know, and that's what's going to be exciting to see who they become, what what they believe is possible. Mm -hmm. we, took, we took the roof off of limits. And we mm -hmm. said there are none except the ones that you place in front of yourself. You yeah. know? And with that, it was so amazing watching them try. Come, put their whole heart out. And, and, and commit to the process. And you would be surprised. These kids, the more they got to know you, they started sharing their mm -hmm. life. You know? And you they heard did. all the hurt in the music you i was yeah. in the crime. you you were hearing who didn't grow up with their daddy that they wrote in a song or how maybe they were bullied or what it means to be young and black it, that's what'll break your heart when you're hearing a 12 or 13 year old ask you questions like you know what should i do because i'm i'm black mm -hmm. and and you know i feel like i'm overlooked or or we heard somebody say you know I, i'm I asked her, what did you get out of this week? She said, you, she's 12. She said, I always had body issues. Mm. I always felt like I was too big and this and that. But now I'm going to, you know, I'm going to accept myself and love myself the way I am. You know, it was like mm -hmm. watching them take these leaps that you forget they're already going through these struggles. Mm -hmm. they, those struggles mm -hmm. don't show up at 21 because you're yeah. Close. You know, yeah. those struggles are happening every day in their lives. And it was, it was like, I'm telling you, when I say I cried all week, I just couldn't, yeah. just, whether it was joy or whether it was just, you know, watching, you know, their reality. So no, it was emotional. I'm sure it's like, like you said, this was your dream and now you're living your dream and not only are you living it, but it's successful. So, I mean, that alone would you know jerk a person you know yeah. so then you then you have on top of that these kids which you know a lot of times they are like the purest 
of emotions just flowing out of them like yeah. and you are there witnessing that and you are not only witnessing but you actually created the space so that they could let these truths flow out i mean why i mean it, it had to be it had to be very emotional it was um, because, like the safe space and at the end of the day they would be like i don't want to go and you're like I almost just had to turn the Zoom off sometime at the end of the night. Like, yeah, you know, they, they enjoyed yes. that place, which is crazy because yes. we really were just on Zoom. We mm -hmm. had created an energy where they felt safe and seen. And you mm -hmm. knew some were misfits. You knew some were the ones that didn't fit into every pocket. Mm -hmm. Some were, you know, the popular artists that already yeah. Did. But there were those that needed a place, especially in COVID, when you've been stuck at home mm -hmm. and there's nobody that's like too outside of your mom or your family to, you know, attach to. Yeah. And they all had their favorite days and they, they, they found connection with their teachers. What was your favorite day? Hmm. I'm going to have to say my favorite day had to be, it's probably a toss up between today, which is our music day, but our fashion uh, costume design day was phenomenal and Oof. I think it was because Mercedes Cook who is the costume designer on the shy and mm -hmm. on Queen of the South her spirit was just so open and her presentation was just so well put together and it was new for all of us me too you know we're singers artists and so then we mm -hmm. were watching and she was teaching us how to sketch but what was so great was at the show out the the challenge of the day was not only to read a script, pick your character, sketch out what that character would have on. Now go in your closet and bring it to life. Mm -hmm. to life you could bring your mom, your brother, your sister, you could bring mm. models on. So it became this family moment where moms were in there, you know, modeling these outfits that kids had put together. Some girl, you know, had her dolls all dressed up in it and it became like connected in this Mm -hmm. world where we feel disconnected right like zoom ain't the same as being in person but like it was it was better it was effective you know we we had parents in there we had little sisters in there and mm -hmm. I thought that was just such a fun challenge watching their creativity go from the paper onto their models and I think mm -hmm. the moms felt so honored to be a part of that community and so that was my favorite day uh watching all that come together uh so oh yeah. cool yeah who oh, I didn't I, I got to be there I didn't see I was there on Tuesday and then I was there today and I was there another day but today was really good so I really enjoyed the show out um because it was just all of them and it was so emotionally driven and like you said the con the um songs and the poems and just the artistry that was being showcased was fueled by you know their real life situations yeah. Yeah. and early on you know sometimes i get a little back room action um there was a young man he uh what's his name uh carwell what's uh creighton creighton that that right there I mean, he had he had a song, he had a speech, he had, you know, he had. He sat at that piano and played. His he little played song. the piano. It was awesome. So it was, it. I was impressed as well, Fiona, with the creativity of everyone. But with him, it was like so yes. hard. You know? Yes. I was just like, wow. I know that was when wowzers. I went on. I said, I'm not gonna fight it. Just let the tears come. What he said. He sang his little song, but what he said after was he saying. And yeah. you know, I, today was awesome because Matt Sachs, who is um, a writer uh, at Netflix for Disney Animation, he's written musicals um, off Broadway. He came and he, what he told them that was so special is that no one can tell your story but you. And mm -hmm. he really encouraged them to be vulnerable, and he encouraged them to. Today was about tell your own story, which I thought was so dope. After a whole week of discovering yourself, today is all about your artistry and dress the way you want to dress. And, you know, we got to peek inside who they'll become as they keep growing. Mm -hmm. so, 
It was awesome. It was just awesome. That's all I can say. I was happy that I was able to join today, and I stayed on for the entire showcase hour because I was just enthralled. I was just pulled in by all of the talent and the excitement because one thing with COVID is, like, you don't get a lot of additional excitement in our lives. You know, you just get day in, day out, wake up, eat, the dessert. But what was going on in the dream camps was full, full of excitement, full of life, full of hope, full of promise, just full of everything. And it was just so refreshing. So I stayed for the entire the entire time. Yes, thank you, thank you. I mean, and it was fun because I did interviews with a lot of the kids in between sessions, and I kept asking them, "What, what did you think?" And they all just were like, "This one boy, he said, I, I would have said it, I was over the moon, but I'm over the galaxy." <laughs> that was, mm -hmm. but like, you know, they were just blown away. And today yeah. we barely wanted. To, we all waved until the final camera went off. Because I think we're all going to miss each other. But what was encouraging is we all know each other now. So now we didn't know each other last week. So now you can reach out to me or to other people that you met. Some of my teachers have already told me, like, girl, such and such already hit me up, you know. Um, so that's like, but they've got a community. They have a network now. And so that's what's most, you know, that's the best thing. You have to find your tribe and love them hard, engage with them hard, and that's kind of what we were talking about tonight in terms of finding running mates because you need to find someone in this world that you relate to that you're compatible with. Yeah. And this week we had so many things happen, but the one major thing that, you know, propelled us to really talk about running mates and compatibility was that Kamala Harris is now on the Democratic ticket as the vice president. Okay. And that right there, my friends, it is history in the making, okay, in the doggone making, because she, I'm sure she had a lot of those attributes, you know, embodied in her that you speak of in terms of, you know, the haters are out there, that's fine, you know, I'm going to still push on. I'm going to be resilient. I'm going to do what I got to do because God put a mission inside of my heart. Mm -hmm. I'm here and I have a purpose and that's what I'm going to fulfill. So that pushed us to be here today. And we were talking about all the different things that encourage us or that are components of good relationships, which your your kids now, the inaugural class of the Dream Camp, have some good connections out there in the world with people they have some similarities with, that they are somewhat compatible with, if not just because they are in the same field. And you know, definitely, that's one of the elements of compatibility yes. is to have something that you can have in common. Yeah, yeah. So, I, I, I will be very, absolutely, it will be very interesting to see how um, Biden and Kamala, like how that works when we see them, you know, when we start to see them out together and, and moving together and finding out mm -hmm. what their compatibility is, yeah. you know. Because it's like finding your Finding your partner, whether that's your, like, husband, lover, partner, or your business partner, or your best friend partner, like, the person that you're going to do something extraordinary with, that's, you got to really be careful about how you pick that, right? You really have to be careful. And like you just said, there are, you know, we when we talk about relationships, our mind automatically takes us to, you know, um, romantic relationships. But our lives are just totally filled with relationships of different types. And there are different types of relationships. You, you have your, you know, your eros or, you know, those sexual relationships, romantic relationships. You have those friendship relationships you have those you know i'm cordial with this individual this is my acquaintance type of relationship but regardless of whatever the relationship it is you want it to be beneficial so yes we i'm i'm interested to see what happens um 
and it's just been it's been it's since since monday was it monday when he announced that or was it tuesday was it tuesday it was I this week it was tuesday 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 he announced that he was running with kamala harris and and then there was such a polar divide right and it was wild out there in these what streets. was the divide girl i was in dream kids tell me girl no, people were like i don't i just don't make no sense why did he choose her oh, and then it's like people were angry about it our people so who did they yes. want what, what, what um, alternative should have been? A lot of people were saying they wanted Susan Rice. A lot of individuals were rooting for Susan Rice. And I don't know, you guys out there, you know, let me know your thoughts. But they just felt as though, you know, Kamala Harris's record as the um, attorney uh, in California was really, you know, against black people. And. You know, you know, Okay, if we're going to be real, we at the Kiki now. We done with Dream Kids. If we at the Kiki and we keeping it real. I thought, like, I'm totally down for, I knew I was going to vote. I'm rooting for everybody today, okay? I'm down for that ticket. So I'm voting that ticket, period. So I'm going to give my opinion, but I just want to preface it with, that's my vote. But okay. I did think it was interesting that even as she was running for president herself, it was very clear that she did not have the support of her community. The community right. had already said then, uh -uh, not her, right? So I found it interesting that that's who he ended up picking. And I right. felt like it was like, are you listening to us? Because you're supposedly picking a candidate to energize us, to energize well, our <laughs> community to get out and vote. And yet you pick somebody that really appeases the other side. And I think appeases the other side in all the ways that traditionally appease another side, whether it's the look, whether it's the, you know, the traditional package. It felt like a safe pick at a time when the world is in a total, is ready for something revolutionary. And he jumped up and said, I'm a hire a woman. And then the world told him it had yeah. to be black. And you know, yes. like, were you really going to go with Stacey Abrams? That's who I thought. Were you really going to go with Stacey Abrams who has yeah. the dreads and the pullout and is a plump woman who isn't married and things that are yes. non-traditional? Or are yeah. you going to still play the status quo? And ju just to say that it got done. Okay. Well, I know, I know, I know, I understand. What'd you say? I said, I don't know if you can make a clip of that. Somebody going to get me. Get me. Um, but I understand. I feel like, you know, and, and you have to. I mean, we feel that way. But, you know, when you're running, it's it's still a marketing campaign, right? And you have to choose the individual you feel as though is going to, who does, you know, stand in, you know, parallel with your your beliefs and your your thoughts and, and, and your ideals, but then also who is marketable. And what I do know is that what I've heard is that, yes, she does. She does resonate with educated women voters across the board, not just, you know, in the black arena, but just across the board. And that's one place where um, he felt as though he could, you know, get some good support because that's where Hillary, Hillary Clinton didn't win out last time and those those votes went to 45. So I think it's a it's a it's a it's a crazy it's 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 layered it's as politics, everything it's else. politics and it's really politics. We say that in other ways, but this is literally really politics. politics. But we will see if it plays in his favor because while he wanted to get women, I know they want the black vote because the black vote usually makes the difference. And if you can get us excited enough, the point I thought was to get us excited enough to get out in COVID. And, and we COVID. still should be. We should be. Yeah, but we still should be. You know who but we're dealing with. Because if we would have chose Stacey Abrams, they would have been like, well, she, does she even know? She don't, can't even really deal with her finances, even though that, you know, um, Trump, number 45, has, you know, filed for bankruptcy and hasn't paid his bills. But let this black woman, 
do all these things with her financial standing, then we're going to really have some situations. It's just always something. You always have to weigh it. And I would hate to be in his shoes and I hate to be in her shoes because it's just like, ugh. But at the end of the day, she's an accomplished black woman and she's just accomplished. I'm not going to even put the woman or black. She's accomplished. She's she's accomplished and she can handle the job. Um, that's it. I mean, now that it's been chosen, we know that she's able to do the job at hand. Somebody said, just stick to the issues. They better not start dancing and whatnot. <laughs> Cause well, you mean like start doing the nay nay? Like we better yeah. not see y'all nay nay. <laughs> you don't want her to be a, doing her line, her step, her steps, any like doing ski wees all over the, you know, the bait. In her favor, she is a part of. Is she a Delta or AKA? She's an AKA. She's an AKA, and um, yeah, she's an AKA. Yeah, and they mean, were ski weeing when all she over was the internet. Running, I was down for her to have my vote. So this isn't a personal thing. This is more like if I'm listening to the people around me, I know that when I would say that, that she was my pick, people were like, wow. So oh, I already knew that she wasn't, um, I knew that she wasn't uh, a fan favorite amongst this crowd. So we'll see what happens. Because the truth is, it should not matter. We got to make some changes at the top. So they got my vote. That's why I wanted to start this whole thing out with. They got my vote. Yeah. Um, oh, there will be some ski -wee. There will be some ski -wee and I'm, I'm. Y'all better get y'all ears ready. Let me see, because a natural honey wants to find a young black artist on Instagram and YouTube for her, too. Oh, I think she was asking a question about her daughter. We segued, and I didn't know how to come back to it. She was asking how she can keep her daughter... And I was going to hit you up. She was asking how she could keep her daughter interested. Her daughter is interested in drawing. And uh, she wants to keep that alive. Um, mm -hmm. I would say look for some artist programs. I think what was cool about our program was that she could have, you know, there's so many different ways to use your artistry, right? Yeah. It's so easy to think about just drawing. But, like, there's architecture. There's, like, costume design. There are all these different ways that, like, you can use your artistry. Mm -hmm. So I would definitely right now, I'm sure there's some online programs specifically for people that are um, wanting to draw. And definitely yes. when we come back uh, with Dream Camps, you should totally put her in mm -hmm. there because it's an exposure camp. Yeah. And the, the kids, most of them walked away like, I didn't know I liked that. I didn't know I could do that because they're still at such a developmental age that I, w I didn't want them to just focus and already just crown yourself a dancer. You're yeah. an artist and you can use your artistry in a lot of ways because it's hard to make a living as an artist. So the more ways and skills that you have to use your artistry, the more likely you are to be able to keep that dream afloat. So yeah. totally inbox me. If you want to talk more about that and definitely follow us at Dream Camps 2020, we'll let you know when the next camp is happening. And I, oh, you said she's nine, nine years old. Okay. And this camp, our camp was for 11 through 18, but I did plan on doing one for five to 11 year olds, something that's more in their lane. So we heard you, girl. Oh, she loves to do comics. And she has a series going, and she wants to do a book. We can't wait. Oh, to wow. See her. I mean, she's like her see. mom. I mean, if you guys don't follow Natural Honey One, you should because she does fantastic and artistic nails. Meow. Ow. See she how the artist streak moves all over? Okay. Because, I mean, you planted that seed in her already natural honey one, and now here she is wanting to do the same. So yes. that's good. And oh, Adrian and Renee is like five to 11 year old camp. Yeah, that would be really so crazy. You know, those are my little buddies, and it would be something pared down, but something for them. Mm -hmm. um, I want to do so. It's coming, it's coming, but we got to vote. So you know, while we're having this discussion, I definitely wanted that clear. They got my vote. I was yeah. Here. I mean, one of the um, individuals who was speaking um, out against Camilla, Kamala Harris, Charlemagne, the 
I don't say the rest of it. But Charlemagne, he even came out and said, hey, y'all, let's, okay. I know we got issues. But let's, number one, let's protect her because she is a black woman. Let's protect her and let's really deal with the issue with it, that is at hand. Wait, so, so let's let's handle that. And, and now, because I really was in dream camps, you know I don't turn my TV on. I'm up mm -hmm. all night. I know. I, I, know. I know. I know. So I really miss all of this. Were people mad? Like, were, did, were people just upset, girl? They were upset. Like, people were saying they were like, people were like, I'm getting off of social media. I can't believe that y'all are talking about you're not going. But a lot of people were like, I can't believe you're not talking about you're, you're not going to vote. Do you realize, like, what is going on in this world? Like, you're not going to vote because you don't like what she, like, so it was just. Were, I know, and that's what I told my friend. So people were saying they weren't gonna vote. Oh yeah, like people were like, "I'm not doing it. This on um, this is what is this? I'm gonna do this and I, and just saying all the random stuff like I'm about to learn about this party and it's like, listen, if they didn't tell if if what you did in 2000 and what was that 2016 didn't teach you anything, let's let the records reflect as once was said on a Jerry Springer show. Let's let the records reflect. If you vote for anybody outside of the majority party and your opponent is the person you don't want is a part of that majority party and you carry your little self off and vote for whoever the straw party, your vote actually is going to the person that you don't want to win. But that's so my let's point, get it straight. Carla, that was my point. When he, it was a safe pick, and it, it was a, it was a blanket pick. You, you, you acted like you were gonna do something for us. I want to give y'all somebody to represent you, but you went and picked the person who was gonna represent us, and we were like, but she don't represent us the way we want to be represented in yeah. 2020. And I think that's <laughs> what I was afraid of because I know the way we, some of us can think. Oh yeah, I'm not but gonna vote. You know, but the thing is, is this is I feel like no one ever gives any honor to people who evolve, like who actually are evolving. Because we're talking about her record when she, you know, was the attorney, was it attorney general or what it was? It's not the attorney general, but she was the prosecutor in oh, California. Was. was it the attorney general? Um, it's yeah. Thank you. So, um, I feel like sometimes. Well, hey, let me get my glasses on. I feel like sometimes people don't really um, take advantage or speak really about um, people being evolved, right? So we just want to say, oh, you said that 15 years ago or you voted that way 10 years ago without really recognizing if they have changed or if they have taken note of the wrong that they did or, or you know, recognize that their decisions could be better. And I always say, like, it's the evolution of an individual. So you don't know. My decision-making today is not the same decision-making I made 10 years ago. And, yes, although, we, you know, as elected officials, you should really, you know, try to perform with everyone in mind. Sometimes you're just in the thick of it and you just say, okay, this is this. Let me weigh, the, you know, let me weigh these options. And you choose whatever option you can. But no, I just I, don't. I, I mean, I totally love uh, – Somebody said, I got my blue reader on. These are totally fake. <laughs> they just to make me look smart. They don't, they just, they just for smart moments. Now, what we didn't know is she was a, okay, so she is a, a lawyer who served as a junior senator. She, mm -hmm. uh, she's a graduate of Howard University. Now, yes, I like she's a graduate. And yep. She was the district, uh, she was the district attorney's office, the city attorney, uh, the district attorney. She was elected yes. attorney general of California. Yes. Attorney general. So she was, yes. And 2014. Yes. yes. So when she was attorney general um, or while she was being a prosecutor, she had some pretty harsh convictions. And they were like, you know, she was really trying to convict black 
you know, or 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 crimes that are prim, 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 primarily, you know, done by black people with really harsh penalties. And so now everyone's like, she's not for the black people. And really, that's what is rooted in that. And it's like, okay, I understand. But it's sometimes we have to really sit back and just allow some people the grace that they say, okay, that was not the best decision. I'm operating in a different emotional intelligence realm in my brain now, and I I, I get it. Yeah. But that's not what the people are saying. Well, no, because we're not all, we're passionate people. We're not always a logical people, and we just and when we just don't like somebody, we just don't. And so it made me be like, are you out of touch with what we're saying? Because you did it anyway. Because you mean Joe Biden? Kind of. That's what I was thinking. I was thinking, like, you did it. And, and, so, and so it's like, well, did you really do it for me? It's like somebody buying you a birthday gift. You know what I mean? You know how I no. get birthday gifts. It's like somebody buying you a birthday gift, but bringing something that they like. And then they like, you yeah. supposed to be happy. It's like, well, I want it. A watch, and you showed up with some scissors. The compatibility with this situation was the compatibility with the general population. Was she more? Uh, uh, was she more digestible for the general population? So, Not and I, me. And I think that's the saddest part. Every time we say that, that's when you're like, "So did we? We halfway. We can't forget a month ago we burned." But Barack, burned. But Barack Obama was the same. He was. I mean, at the point at that time, yes, but he wasn't anything that was truly militant looking. He he was a nice looking, light skinned, curly haired guy. So he was the same in the same you know vein of that. But you know, because if there would have been because his politics weren't that. He a he had Michelle standing right next to him, and he, his politics and the places that he had served as a community leader was showing somebody. Yeah. I don't think that this is about for us as black people. I don't think it's about colorism for us per se. I think it's sometimes it goes into. Colorism. Well, I'm saying that across that yeah. situation. Yeah, that's yeah. What yeah. Saying Barack like Obama something. is a that's the same like parallel situation for them. So I mean, I get it. I get why she had a lady on the phone with me, and she said, "Oh, I like her. She has an Indian mother, so she is not all black." And that's what I found to be a little. And he and Barack Obama wasn't either. No, but he looks like it. No, just about as much as Kamala. Black name. He had that real. Like I just feel like I feel like what I feel like we were given a gift. That's like, here, we gave it to you, now be quiet. Um, I don't, and I do think it's unfortunate. I do think it was, it's exactly what you're saying, to appease the masses, but I don't know if it was for the right reasons. And we'll see if it works. We'll see. I hope it, I hope it works, because the thing is, it's not even, it's like, there is a mission at hand. We got and, two and minutes, people, make it good. That's all I got. I ain't got nothing. There is a mission at hand, and we got to get him out. I just, um, I, you know, it, it just wasn't fair. We got these choices, and it was like, well, you just got to take that because you hate this person. But that's where we at. We don't have mm -hmm. a lot of options, and I'm team. I don't mind her, so don't get me wrong. I do think it was a safe choice. I do mm -hmm. think it was for other people more than it was for us. But we live in a world where we got to share space. And Okay, okay. You know. Okay. If that's okay, where we gotta okay, leave. okay, 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 yeah, okay, okay. You know, not that we're not already okay. sharing space because okay. the president okay. is a white man. Um, okay, but okay, 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 okay. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I think you made excellent point. Excellent, excellent. I excellent. made one. That was one. I mean, the, I I think we're sharing space, but um, kinda. Because, I mean, we already, it's not like there wasn't already a white man that was going to lead it. So, to have a black woman, we, we still got to share half of that. You know, it just keeps trickling down. But, here we are. Ski we. Hashtag Biden Harris. I'm, I'm on board. I, and it's a woman. I'm on board. And I hope that she uh, protects all of our interests. And 
keeps, you know, and, and yeah. So we did it, girl. We didn't know if we could, but it's 25 seconds left, and we did it. So thanks for you guys tuning in. What's up, Tia? I saw you. Hey, Quinetta. Uh, what up, Adrian? And whoever else stopped in to hang out with us, we appreciate you. We'll be back next week with more Kiki and Kimono. Peace. Peace.